Hey people, I'm back. I've uh, been away for a while, approximately six months. All kinds of exciting things have happened. COVID keeps rolling along. Massive, smoky wildfires filling the sky with dirty, stinking smoke. I live on the West Coast in the Portland, Oregon area. So last fall, we had some intense fire action and the skies were filled with these plumes of smoke for weeks and it was awful. Anyway, it's been an interesting six six months to say the least. But we're pulling out of it. We're all getting our vaccinations, right? I'm due for my second vaccination tomorrow, so uh, I'll be happy to be done with that, hoping I don't have a crazy reaction. I didn't have a reaction after the first shot, so that was good. I'm anticipating no drama tomorrow when I get the second Moderna shot. At any rate, I'm back to talk about some music, and I'm going to switch up my format, or not format, but just the way I do it, I guess. Last year, I made some videos. I made like an Andy Weatherall video, and a Big Audio Dynamite video, and a Brian Eno video. And I'd sit here and talk about these massive piles of records I have from these artists. And I'll sit here for like an hour. I could sit here all day if I wanted to. But I'm going to trim down the video length, I think, as someone who makes these videos... It's easier for me to just keep them to like a length of five to ten minutes. I'm sure as viewers, you probably don't want to be sitting there any longer than five or ten minutes. So I'm going to start uh, digging a little deeper into specific releases rather than just sitting here and blathering on and on and throwing words out and having verbal diarrhea about every single thing that somebody has done. I'm going to focus on a particular release or a couple releases that I just want to talk about. And albums and the singles that spawn from those albums. I thought that might be a cool approach to keep a video between five and ten minutes in length. Talk about an album, talk about the singles that spawned from it, talk about the remixes and b-sides on those singles, and then call it a day. Or just take a collection of songs, records, releases from a certain band and talk about a few of them. Not all of them, but space them out and make these videos a little more condensed rather than these marathon 60 minute journeys where we're all just nodding off after like the 45th minute or even the 25th minute or maybe even the fifth minute. I don't know, you can tell me. However, I'm just going to focus on a couple records here at a time from here on out. And I'm going to begin that journey with some records I pulled out from my collection. Again, these are just records that I am in the mood to listen to, some old stuff, some new stuff. Things I'm just in the mood to hear. And as I mentioned in my past videos, I'm on this journey to record all of my vinyl into MP3 format. And I kind of dig through my old collection and my, my boxes of records and find stuff that I'm just in the mood to hear. Some of these things I haven't heard in years. And it's fun. It's almost like having my own little record store. I can I can sift through and discover these gems that I forgot I had. So tonight... I'm going to talk about one of my favorite groups of all time, or favorite collectives, if you will, and that's Jesscom or Guesscom. I don't know how to say it. It's sort of a, a loose collective of uh, electronic people, mainly Autecker. Autecker is the main group, and that's a that's a group I'll more than likely be talking about a lot. I, they mean a lot to me personally. I know I know a lot of people know about this group and know about these two dudes. But I think that my spin on this can be a little bit unique because I was there when these records were first coming out in the early 90s. I was buying these records. And I've been along through every moment of the journey with them. And I look forward to my all, all my Warp records are not all of them, but, you know, a good collection of them are sitting over here. And I look forward to talking about some of these Warp records. I know we we know about Autecker and Aphex Twin and Boards of Canada. I'll talk about all those guys at some point. And tonight I'm just going to focus on Autecker with a with a focus on, I'm going to say Jesscom. It could be Guesscom, I'm sorry, but I'm going to say Jesscom because that's the way I'm used to saying it. Jesscom was like this collective of people, Autecker being included in that. Also, Daryl Fitton, otherwise known as Bola. Daryl Fitton, I think, was the main drive be be behind Jesscom. It's, if, I'm wrong on, if I'm wrong on that, someone correct me. I don't think there's ever been any, any clear indication if it was influenced by one person over another. 
But most of the Jesscom releases, I think, were spearheaded by Fitton, and Autechre would come in and be involved to some degree, as well as Rob Hall. Those of you who know who Rob Hall is, is solely responsible for some of the most, the most excellent DJ mixes of all time. Seriously, if you can find these Rob Hall mixes, find them. I don't know if they're around or not anymore. Back in the early thousands, they were being passed around the internet, and he used to have a website where he'd post these DJ mixes. They are the best DJ mixes I've ever heard. I'm not a huge fan of DJ mixes generally. I mean, I like them sort of. Rob Hall brought it to a whole new level. There are a couple of DJs on this planet that I think are are just a cut above everybody else. Weatherall being one of them. Uh, Richie Houghton, Plastic Man, Fuse, he's another one. And Rob Hall. Seriously, I don't know if you can find these Rob Hall mixes on the internet, but go look for them. They are killer. Anyway, he was involved in Jesscom as well. The first release, I'm not going to talk about every Jesscom release. I pulled out three that I wanted to discuss tonight that probably are my favorite three. Number one being uh, Keenel. Kind of cool packaging. It came in this bubble wrap sleeve. Four tracks. Keenel. And it's, you know, again, there, there's, there's really no credits on this thing. Um, it, it, when you listen to it, it's like, yeah, this could be Bola. It could be Autecker. It could be a mixture of those guys. Rob Hall could, is probably in here. It's never really explained who it is. When you listen to it, uh, there are definite there are definite bits and pieces of the songs that make you think maybe this is Autecker, maybe this is Bola. Uh, I'll go through it track by track really quick. It's a four tracker, uh, almost 40 minutes of music. Uh, each side has almost 20 minutes. So the four songs are pretty long. You get your money's worth. For, I, I'm not sure what this is going for now. Um, I remember at the time when I bought this in the mid nineties, it was like eight or nine dollars. Most Autechre records go for a pretty penny nowadays though. So I'm assuming it's worth more than that. They're all called Keenel. They, all the tracks, it's like Keenel, one, two, three, four, and f one, two, three, four. There's four tracks. The first track is, is very funky. The whole thing is, every Jesscom release is, is, is um, the foundation is in electro more than anything else. Obviously, there are techno influences and some down tempo. It's always, though, fused in electro. This is no different. It's a little more on the down tempo side, Keenel, one. It's got this sample, it almost sounds like a, uh, an orchestral sample. I don't know if it's a sample or not, but it's like this orchestral vibe and this slow, crunchy beat. And it, it goes and goes for about eight, eight or nine minutes, I want to say. It's a very cool building track. Keenel 2 and 3 are, a little, are in the same line. Electro, down tempo. I'm not going to use any fucking horrible terms like IDM or anything like that. By the way, any of you who use the term IDM, stop it. Please, it hurts my ears. IDM is a term used by people who don't listen to electronic music. Electronic music is just that. It's electronic music, and it's good or bad. That's really the only way we should be talking about this music. But Keenel 2 is much like Keenel 1 in that it's a down-tempo, crunchy electro track. Very slick production nice builds here and there and by the end of it i think it's probably 10 or 11 minutes long keenel too but by the end of it it's just it's a really nice builder and at the end of it and this is what makes me think keenel too is influenced by autecker in the mid 90s autecker had this style where their songs would have these really excessively long outros and when I say excessive, I don't mean that in a bad way. They would have these out, these outros that would fade out for like three or four or five minutes. They just had these slow burns all the way to the end. It was really cool. And Keenel 2 has that. Keenel 3 is similar as, as the Keenel 1. Slow build, down tempo, electro based. Very cool production. Excellent track. Keenel 4 is my favorite Jesscom track. It is really warm, really inspired, great production, 
that long, slow burn outro, really beautiful sort of orchestral feel to it. Impeccable production, really crunchy electro beats, but not to the point where it's super fast, like a lot of electro. Even some electros housed in hip hop, and there's always that influence in anything Autechre does, in my opinion, as far as that swath of sound. But Keen L4 is my favorite Jess Gum track. It just kind of it starts at a really nice place and builds and builds and builds with this really haunting melody underneath and then slowly goes away. Really excellent track. And shortly after that, I think it was after the same year, after in the, in the same year. The, oh, that came out in 1996, by the way. After that came this. And that, that record was on Scam Records, by the way. Scam, S-K-A-M. This came out on Warp. This is basically Key Now with Autechre remixes. There's two remixes. And again, those of you who like that, early, well, mid-90s Autechre sound with that really slow outro that just goes on forever with the fade out, these are very reminiscent of that. If you like the album uh, Chiastic Slide, Chiastic, Chiastic, who the hell knows? It doesn't matter. If you like that album and you like the singles like Anvil Vapor, garbage anti as i do i love those singles to me that's the odd tech or golden age early mid 90s i'll get to that in another video but these these remixes are really cool especially the a side the mix they do on the a side is classic odd -tacker. really great production uh the B-side mix is also very good, very like stuttering beats, sort of off kilter. And then it's got that really slow outro that goes on forever. Beautiful stuff. Excellent, warm, emotional, electronic music. And the third one I'm gonna to talk, to, talk to you about tonight is this. The sounds of machines our parents used. This is on Clear Records. Clear Records. Clear uh, released some, some classics from great bands like Plaid and Global Communication. Uh, Global Communication released May the Funk Be With You. It was uh, under the Jedi Knights, another, another group I'll talk about at length. But this is a great record. Love this one. Even though my favorite song is on Keen Ale, I, my favorite Jesscom song is Keenel. I think this might be my favorite Jesscom release. All three tracks on here are so good. The A-side's 14 and a half minutes of more up-tempo electro. It sounds more like a lot of what Bola did. I don't know if the A-side had so much Autechre influence on it. Maybe it did, but it doesn't sound like Autechre. It sounds more like Bola. And the two B-sides... That's when it starts sounding a little bit more like Autechre, but maybe not. It's the B1 track is more steeped in electro, up tempo, impeccable production, nice melody, and then the B2 track is really nice. A very slow groove, uh, quirky electronics, some funk in there. A really excellent EP. Three tracks of classic mid-90s electronic warp scam clear tinged electronic stuff those of you who know that music will know what i'm talking about there's so much to unearth it from that era and it's all so good it, the list is endless as far as stuff that you should get your hands on and purchase if you can now again i don't know what these are going for now i can't imagine they're very cheap these records aren't easy to find. They weren't easy to find back then either. I remember I remember this one. Warp wasn't so hard to find, but Just Come, Just Come stuff was not easy to find. Ever. I can't remember. Um here's the here's the label if you'd like to see the label on that one. At any rate, that is my video for tonight. I'm gonna keep it as I'm already up to almost 15 minutes. Or maybe over that, once I overdub all the music into these. By the way, I don't know how to do sound clips yet. I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for those. I don't know what 
label owns what. I don't know. I'm not going to look into it. I'm going to post some video clips too so you guys can hear what I'm talking about. Hopefully I don't get in trouble for that. That would really suck. But anyway, thanks for hanging with me tonight and I will make another video as time permits. And thanks for hanging out. I'll talk to you next time.